Uh, Jake, you go. Um, I want to play a clip from this interview between Douglas Murray and Benjamin Netanyahu, where he talks about the war will take as long as it takes. Let's watch this. We have to win in Gaza. We have to achieve total victory. Hamas cannot be left standing, coming out of the ruins with a V sign and saying, we'll do it again and again and again. What I say to our American friends, whose help I appreciate a, a great deal, I said, uh, the war will take as long as it takes, but it will result in total victory because this, our battle is your battle and our victory is your victory as well. Now, Jake, I saw today that one of his cabinet was suggesting that they believe 25% of Hamas terrorists have now been killed and 25% more wounded. And so, in their estimation, 50% of the enemy has now been effectively taken out of the battlefield. A, do you think that is probably true? And B, what do you make of what Netanyahu said about this effectively, whether people like it or not, they're going to finish this job? Yeah, so I'll address the propaganda first. There's no way of confirming any propaganda that comes out of Israel. Those are made-up numbers. But let's assume for a second that it was true. Okay, so you've uh, taken down half of Hamas and killed 26,000 some odd people. Does that mean are you're going to kill another 26,000? How many Palestinians is America supposed to help you murder for your nonsense objective, which never made any sense in the first place? Which leads me to the second part. Netanyahu says two absurd things. Uh, one is an effort to avoid accountability. He keep, kept saying to Douglas over and over again, oh, in terms of what went wrong on uh, me not defending Israel on October 7th when they needed the defense, not offense, not killing random innocent Palestinian civilians, but actual defense. He says, oh, we'll get to that accountability after the war. Well, okay, when is the war going to be over? He says, well, we have to have total victory. What does that mean you have to kill every member of Hamas? Well, that everybody knows that's impossible. So, oh, look at that. He set up an impossible standard for the war to be over so that it's never over and we never get any accountability. And finally, uh, the idea that America should fight Israel's war for it is absurd. No, a hard no. We should send no money to Israel going forward to kill innocent Palestinians or as long as they do the occupation. And now they're dragging us into a giant war in the Middle East that they're going to ask us to pay for both in blood and treasure. There's no Americans that are actually in favor of that other than neoconservatives that dragged us into Iraq and that debacle over there. So my answer to Netanyahu is a hard no. No way do I want to go to war with Iran to help your political career. Dennis Prager, do you think Benjamin Netanyahu is long for this world as the leader of Israel? Because he's so unpopular domestically. The polls have never been worse for him. Um, you get a feeling of somebody where the war is almost his last stand as leader. And in a very cynical way, if he stays in it long enough and can claim victory over Hamas, that might be his only way of maintaining power. It's hard to imagine another Israeli leader acting differently. Uh, th there is this perception in the West, and I'm neither a Netanyahu fan nor a Netanyahu opponent, but it is hard to imagine an Israeli leader who would say, you know, Hamas butchered our people on October 7th, raped our women, burned families alive, want to destroy us, want to kill every Jew that they can find, uh, but we won't respond militarily. Uh, there, in, in Israel, there is virtual unanimity. There may be disgust with that man individually. I have no idea. The British kicked out Churchill after World War II. Mm. Uh, people are very fickle about their, uh, about their political leaders. So I have no interest in what the polls are. All I can tell you is I can't think of an Israeli leader who would be acting differently. Yeah, I think that's probably true. Um, Cenk Hugo, I want to talk about this disturbing report which has come out about the United Nations Relief and Works Agency where there were murmurings about potential involvement of some of their members in what happened. Um, we've now seen a, a Wall Street Journal investigation which seemingly establishes uh, from a dossier, actually the New York Times as well, uh, an Israeli intelligence dossier, uh, alleging that 200 workers uh, from the UN, RWA, are Hamas or Islamic Jihad operatives, uh, didn't provide detailed evidence. The dossier also alleged that 12 workers crossed into Israel on October the 7th with the Hamas terror group. 
UNRWA has sacked nine of those employees and says it's investigating another report by the Wall Street Journal, citing it also Israeli intelligence dossier, alleges 1,200 of the UNRWA's 12,000 employees in Gaza have links to Hamas or Islamic Jihad. Now, I'm sure your first response will be, well, I'm not going to believe Israeli intelligence dossiers, but the fact that the UNRWA has already sacked nine of these people suggests there's a clear problem there. Yeah. So there's two different issues here, Pierce. So uh, first, you're right, I don't believe Israeli propaganda. They say, oh, trust us, there's hundreds of them. No, I don't trust you at all. Uh, the IDF and the Israeli government have an enormous track record of lying on almost every occasion related to this war. But okay, so you say there's nine folks who've already been uh, uh, terminated, and that's fair, and that's definitely true. So obviously there must be some evidence. Okay, great, fantastic. I want accountability. I don't want anybody involved in the October 7th attacks, and they've been fired. If you want to do a further investigation to see if anybody else was involved and you want to fire them, terrific, no problem. But that's not the real issue here. The real issue is... Uh, the right-wing Israeli government hates this organization because they help Palestinians. There's now half a million Palestinians that are starving, and the only people that are helping them is basically this organization. And Israel thinks, now their right-wing government thinks, well, look, if we can eliminate the one organization that's helping Palestinians, they'll starve more. That way, when we bomb them, when we kill them, and we starve them, there'll be no one to help them. So that'll help us with our ethnic cleansing when we try to push them into Egypt, which several cabinet ministers, including their national security minister, have now said that is what they want to do, which is, of course, ethnic cleansing 101. So they're targeting this group to try to eliminate its funding, and it's working brilliantly. The Western powers don't actually want to help the Palestinians, so they're using this as an excuse to target the whole group. And one last thing that gives you a stark example of it. Let's say that there was nine people or even a couple hundred people inside Israel who helped Hamas on October 7th. It's not impossible. There could be collaborators, right? So does that mean we should get rid of funding for all of Israel? It's an absurd idea when you apply it to Israel, but somehow it's not absurd when you apply it to this organization from the United Nations? Of course it's absurd. They should keep the funding but fire anyone who was involved. Dennis Prager, your, your response to this story. Well, first, let me just say, the idea that is Israel wants to starve the Palestinians is vile. It is, it is another left-wing atrocity on language, like Israel is committing genocide. Genocide has been raped like the word racism has been raped. Every decent term has been denuded of its meaning by people on the left, not by liberals, I always draw that distinction, but by people like Cenk. They have raped the word genocide, they have raped the word racism, they have raped the word sexual attack. All, all the evils have been removed from their context. Israel has no interest. There are five times more Palestinians today than there were in 1950. It is the worst, most ineffective genocide in the history of genocide. It is a vile smear. The United Nations stinks. The United States should leave the United Nations with every other democracy. It is a place where the Human Rights Commission has been headed by Iran, where you have uh, Iran even heading the Women's Rights Commission. It is a terrible organization. The United Nations is to nations what the university has become to education. It has become a moral cesspool. It is time for America to leave. Jane, your response, finally. Yeah, I mean, uh, this guy's hilarious. Uh, did he say, I rape words? <laughs> yes, you okay. rape words. Well, I, I, get... I know you find okay. that funny. It isn't funny. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, that with what you've done then, by your own definition, is rape of the English language and rape of the word rape, uh, let alone the fact that, uh, of course, uh, you know, you say, oh, the left says racism. Anytime anybody criticizes Israel, what do you guys all say? Anti-Semitism. Have you raped that word? That's not true. That's okay. a lie. We say oh, it about no, those never. who want to destroy yeah. Israel, not criticize oh, yeah, Israel. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a complete yeah, yeah. lie. Okay, so let me address the United Nations. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so, look, the United Nations is all of the nations. And uh, right-wingers like Dennis don't war want us to work with all of the nations. They don't like peace. They don't like the world community. They say, we're the ones who are right. We're the good guys. And Netanyahu said this in the interview that you uh, displayed. We're the good guys. They're the axes of evil. And what is the only answer for evil? War. 
So, and that's another thing that the United Nations is trying to prevent, war. And so uh, the neoconservatives like Dennis Prager and others go, no, 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 oh, United Nations people working together, we hate that. Uh, people that have different opinions than us, we hate that. People who are for peace, we hate that. The only answer is war, 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 war. Of course they don't like the United Nations. So what are we supposed to do? Not have a United Nations? We're all just supposed to hate each other forever, never work together, don't even coordinate, don't even communicate? Just go to war forever and ever? This is insanity. And by the way, end the occupation. I'm the only candidate that wants to end not the funding for Israel, not just to, for this war, but for the occupation, which is the core evil, to use the words of Dennis Prager. And it is an indisputable evil that Israel's doing there. And Israel doesn't have to do it. I believe Israel can be a great and peaceful and flourishing country, but they must end the occupation. Jenkforamerica.com. Okay. Gentlemen, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for a spirited debate. I appreciate it.